Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 in our very first farm. We're continuing to try to grow our little farming adventure into a farming empire. Our strategy right now is mostly just trying to uh, do as much grass silage as we can. It sells pretty decently towards the end of the year, so if we can get several cuts, uh, several mowings in <laughs> throughout the year, then uh, we can have a really good yield and make a lot of money. So. Uh, I think what we need to do right now, did we buy this field? Yeah, we did buy this field. It's currently, uh, it currently has potatoes in it. Unfortunately, the year, the part of the year that we're in right now, we're not able to plant grass, but we will be able to do that next month. So let's, um, we're going to, well, hold on. First and foremost, we need to fertilize our fields. <clears throat> so let's back this train up a little bit here. And then we'll take this off. Then we'll back up into our fertilizer over here and we'll get some fertilization done. So that way when this grass does grow, it will be fully fertilized and ready to go. Does that to me. Let's go ahead and get some. I do have the mod that allows me to have del uh, items delivered to me. So let's go ahead and have that delivered. There is a keybind when you download the mod that allows you to set where the deliveries will be dropped off. And as you can see, it does. There are delivery costs when you do that. So be, be sure to keep that in mind. Um, in the last episode, we I did go ahead and take out a massive loan to upgrade our tractor to this bigger one because, man, I was having a hard time with all this equipment. You'll see here in a second. I have to assume that most of the people watching have never seen one of these episodes, so you're not you're not familiar with how my setup works here. So uh, we'll go over that here in just a second. Let's get these fields fertilized, and then we'll come over here. We'll talk about the setup again for those of you who are brand new to the series. And then we will... Uh, Advanced time so we can go plant grass over in that other field and get it fertilized. Well, I mean, I guess it'll be halfway fertilized by that point, but you'll, you guys will see. <coughs> so we have a lot to get done here in this episode. Um, most of it's the same as what we did in the last episode, but, uh, you know, I think most of us who watch these aren't necessarily trying to look for new and in innovative stuff. You're watching to see the progress of the farm because, you know, that's that's how work usually is. You're it's it's a lot of the same stuff over and over again, but you get the satisfaction out of watching the progress, <laughs> watching the watching the dollar amounts go up, watching the equipment get paid off, watching all the watching all of that stuff. So let's go ahead. We'll get this finished out here. Let's sweep all the way back around and get ourselves fully fertilized on the field over here. Advance the next month, come over here, and we'll plant this field. We don't have the field just to the south of it yet. Uh, that'll be the last one we get for this area, this little 12 field down here. But uh, once we get all of that, we will have a very nice, a very nice big grass production area over here that will be able to feed feed our cows, which we will be getting eventually once we have enough money to afford to well. First and foremost, we have this massive bank loan that we took out to buy the tractor. So we still have almost $300,000 worth of debts that we got to pay back. But I'm going to show you why we did that here in just a minute because it makes my life so much easier <laughs> or so much so much less annoying. Let me just put it that way. So let's get this done here. Get our tool put away and then we can advance some time here. stick around for a little bit we have to get through the next month so that we can plant the grass over there and then we have to advance time far enough to actually get to the grass and then we can cover the mowing system that i have over here okay so let's get this turned off i believe so we have to wait for this to grow this is now 100 percent fertilized it has two more months before that's going to be fully grown and we have to wait till next month to plant the other one so let's go ahead and advance time to the next month We'll grab our tractor, we'll grab the cedar, we'll go to that other field, we'll replace the potatoes that are over there with the uh, grass seeds that we want to put down over there. And then we'll be able to plant some grass. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the tractor. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's get this over here. <clears throat> um... Hmm, I think that's I think that's enough seed and fertilizer for grass. So let's get over here. The little line that you're seeing is my uh, GPS steering guidance mod. We'll get that set up here in a second. I want to get a headland pass 
uh, one headland pass over here before we do that, though. Okay, I had to look down at the icon over there at the bottom right of the screen to make sure that we're actually planting grass because more than once I have uh, com I have planted an entire field of the wrong crop because I forgot, oh yeah, I need to actually change the seed type. <laughs> That's always one of the worst things that happens to me. Let's get this lowered down, get the seeder turned on, and here we go. So this will give me some room to turn around. We'll do two passes just to make sure we have plenty of space. Can't plant this one yet, so we'll finish this one here. Turn ourselves around. And get a pass down here. Okay. Normally I would put cuts in the videos, but I'm, I'm going to experiment on this video by just doing everything in real time and see how long the video actually ends up being. Okay, so now we want to set up our GPS coordinates here. So we have to head into the settings and make sure... I, I, I like to use the heading method because I can type in a heading exactly as I want it. And then we just set which headings that we want. I believe we're facing in 90? Or no, I'm sorry, that was 270. It doesn't really matter, but I want to make sure that it's facing the right direction so that I can make my adjustments and they will work. Um, let's see, what was the... Okay, here we go. Let's get this lined up where we want it. Turn back around. Oh, but I gotta set the tool width. I forgot to do that. So you have to, you have to automatically set the tool width so that it'll actually put the... There we go. All right, so what this does is it will, it'll, it'll line, once I activate the steering, it will line me up on that line in the middle and give me perfect runs here. So let's go ahead and get started down the field. And now we can just go up and back and up and back. And the steering's guiding will put me exactly where I need to be to get 100% efficiency with our passes. I'm a big fan, big, big fan of this GPS steering guidance mod because it makes life so much easier. But I do, before we do that, we are gonna need to do another headland pass because uh, these telephone poles really do get in the way. So let's go ahead and turn around here. We'll do, a, we'll do one more pass, uh, one more set of passes in this direction so that we don't have any issues trying to turn around. That way we have plenty of room to get our turns in. Because nothing's more frustrating than when you're in the groove trying to get uh, trying to get all this planting done and then you run into a telephone pole or something stupid like that. It's really annoying. All right, get ourselves turned around. And now once I get vaguely close to the line, I can just press the button and it will put me right on the middle of the path and here we go. Perfect, perfect, al perfectly aligned rows that allow us to use the entire width of the tool and not have any overlap, and this is the way I like to do it. I wish I had found this mod much earlier in my little, in my very, in my already very short career. <laughs> this is just so much better. Let's turn around. And there we go. So we just keep going back and forth like this, get the entire field planted. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do all... Part of me wants to just not put cuts in, but then I have to keep talking the entire time. So we're going to go ahead and pause until I'm done. We're going to go ahead and cut until I'm done with the field here. <laughs> all right, well, there's not much you can do when the field isn't exactly wide enough for equal passes of your cedar. But here we are at the end of our planting. We have fertilized 50% thus far, so we'll have to make sure we come back next month. Let's get our, ce our cedar fold. We'll have to make sure we come back next month and put the fertilizer down on this field so we can get maximum yield out of our crop. The biggest things that we're working towards is trying to make enough money to where we can start buying some uh, cow barns. But before we can do that, we got to pay off these loans that we have, <laughs> which is going to take a while. But I have to say, I know that uh, for you guys, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but this tractor absolutely is way better than the medium-sized tractor that we were using before because I have the power I need to kind of bust our way up the hills. So now we have uh, this field here should be one month ready to go. 
that field over there is going to have the one we just planted has uh i don't know several more months so i think what we'll do is, is as much as i hate having to wait to harvest this i want to I want to mow everything at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and advance time one more month. We'll go fertilize that field. And then I think we have, what, two more months after that until the grass, until all grass is ready to be mowed. That way we can get them all on the same, <clears throat> that way we can get them all on the same cycle. It's annoying having to intersperse all of this uh, between different months. So I'd like to get everything set up in a way that allows us to get it done like this. So let's go ahead and get around here. We'll get the field fertilized and then we'll advance time and do some cutting. Don't worry, we're getting to the part where we'll explain the, the mower setup. And the, mowers, the mower setup is going to change again. Um, it's changed several times as I chase the most efficient way of getting all of this done. I'm not necessarily worried about building the most realistic farm. So let's see, we can actually go ahead and uh, set this up. Uh, oh, come on. Let's get this put here like that. There we go, because you can use this for any number of different things. So now we can get the widest possible swath, and then when we come back, is it... Is it, is it, uh, is it changing? Oh, it was, never mind. It was already, that's my fault for not checking. It was already fertilized. Never mind. Must have still been fertilized. Oh, because we, uh, was it because we seeded over the crops there? Hold on, I need to, we need to go back and make, and see what the, because this is all fully ready to harvest. I don't think this one will be fully. This one's still two out of three. So we got to get, uh, crap, too many different buttons. We still have to wait two more months before everything's ready to go <clears throat> because I want to get everything on the same set. Okay. Get this parked since we don't need to do any kind of, of that. Um, I wonder, let's see, what would be the most efficient way to do this? Let's look at our map here. So we have all of these are ready to go now. This has two more months to go. So this had one month of growth. I wonder if it makes sense for me to harvest all of this and then this field can just wait until this is ready to harvest again. I think that's probably the most efficient way to go. So let's go ahead and just do some mowing now then and then we'll just save that last field for when it's ready to go. Um, all right, so can I Alt R and it will set my, I had a feeling I had to undo it. Yeah, I have to wait for it to... <laughs> the issue I have is is that my baler here is an unrealistic baler and it has an extra wide pickup width. So I have to put set my width while this is attached like this and out. And then I can attach all of this. And then we'll go ahead and we'll explain what's going on with this setup here. But like I said, it is going to change somewhat again because um, I have discovered certain things about the trailer there that just really annoy me. First, we need to get this lined up with where I want it to be. Then we can get it all set. Get everything lowered. There we go. Get everything turned on. And away we go. So the trailer I have right now, I have a auto loading, auto bailing mod that takes all of the standard trailers and ma makes them basically auto loading. And you'll see an example of that here in a minute once our uh, baler wraps a bale and sets it on the ground that'll automatically get picked up by the trailer uh, but i found that there's an irritating bug somewhere in the software where the auto baling function gets turned off just randomly and then all of your bales fall off so i've switched to using the standard in-game non-modded um, bale pickup trailer the one that has the arm that reaches out and grabs them and picks them up um, and that's how I have been doing it on my personal farm that I've been running outside of the game. And it works pretty well, and I haven't had a bale fall off yet. So <laughs> this setup will be changing again. We'll keep the trailer because it's good for moving pallets and things like that around, especially once we start getting to the point where we're um, going to be starting to collect eggs from chickens and stuff. But uh, for now, we'll just we'll set it off to the side because I don't want to lose the money having having to rebuy it later. So here we go, we're wrapping a bale. It gets popped off. Oh, 
Helps to actually have the auto bailing feature turn on. Weird. Hold on, I'm having a bug here. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to pop up and look just like that. But sometimes if you forget to turn the bailing, the auto bailing feature on and then you go through a bunch of stuff, it's just, it gets, it gets kind of weird. <clears throat> so we'll do, uh, we'll do a few paths. We'll, we'll do this entire set here. Get turned around. I'm not being very efficient with my turns, but it's because it's just so tight over there and I don't really have room to do the kind of headlands that I typically like to do. So Especially for this this smaller field up here, I'm not that worried about making sure I'm getting 100% efficiency and grabbing every single blade of grass. It's not it's not the end of the world. Little little bits of mist patches here aren't exactly the worst thing. It's not going to make that big of a difference. So we'll go down here. We'll get these done. We'll move over to the other field and get that one started. And then we'll put a nice big cut in so you don't have to watch the entire mowing process. But Wanted to make sure that you guys got a nice good look at how my little setup works here. Completely unrealistic, obviously, but much more efficient with our time and much more fun because we're not having to make a bunch of extra trips back and forth and, uh, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of different things end up getting, uh, end up saving us a bunch of time because of the way that we're choosing to do, the way that I'm choosing to do this. So I think I'm going to need to fold up my mower so that we have room to get over the bridge over in this direction. I've found that coming around to this side or at the very least going through the little gap right here in the trees is easier to get over here because the other ways end up having obstacles that make it harder for you to get through. So yeah. And then I've also found that, at least for me, the easiest way to do this is to turn around like this. That actually works out. That actually, it's not bad. Let's get our guidance set up, get everything turned back on, and we'll go down this way. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to come up this way, and then we're going to go all the way around and make a nice little headland pass. I'm sorry. Nice little headland pass all the way to here and then come back this way and maybe do that once or twice just to give ourselves a nice big uh, big amount of room to get around. And as you can see that bailing, the, the unrealistic width of the baler pickup over there, you can see that's picking up all of the excess, uh, all of the excess grass that gets left uh, during our sharp turns. It's very nice to have, makes things much more convenient and easy to do. And I'm all about convenient and easy. <laughs> I think most people are. It's very... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I will go back and fix this. Sometimes I do get a little bit bothered by certain things. Uh, well, I guess we're just going to have to spin around like this. Sometimes the trees get in the way and it makes it very difficult for me to see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and we'll just go all the way back around. And then once we get to the part where we're just going up and back, I'll, I'll put a cut in so you guys can don't have to watch the entire boring section here. Okay, not sure what's going on here. We'll just leave that little strip there. It's not that, it's not that much grass, and frankly, I'd rather just get this done. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll just do a loop around like this. And that gets us on our path over here. So we'll go out, we'll try to turn around, see if I have enough room to do it. If we're able to just do our up and back loops like this, that's great. Um, I'm not sure that even with the one pass that we've done, that's enough room for me to turn around without running into bushes and stuff, but uh, we'll give it a try. It sort of is. Leaving, I don't, I don't, I don't want to leave any more of those than we have to, but uh, at the same time, I'm trying to be efficient with our time. But anyways, I'm going to finish this field, and then we'll go drop off our bales. All right, finishing up the last little bit of the mowing here. Let's get everything turned off. Then we can bring our trailer around, unload it into our silage production facility over here. 
This little thing over here will turn your grass into either hay or silage, which is a very nice feature to have. Get our trailer right there. Too far. Right there. All right. And then we need to get it out of mailing mode and un... No. What? Why won't you... Oh, because I'm not on the trailer. Ha! And unload it there. And that's what we're going to do there. Perfect. So, um, I think what we're going to do is, is we're going to wait the next, th uh, next few months until this grass is ready to go again. But before we can do that, we yet again have to go through and fertilize grass. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of repetition in all of this. There isn't really any good way around it. Okay, let's get this turned off there. Oops. And then we can just drop this one right here. And we just got to do the same thing we did last time. Go through and do a bunch of fertilization. So I'll get that done off camera. And then uh, we'll advance time a few months. All right, we have finished fertilizing our field, and now it's time to advance. Now it's time to advance time <laughs> until we're ready to do our next cutting, uh, which is going to be when the fields over here are ready to go. So, unfortunately, there will be a little bit of waste because we're not able to cut each field as soon as they're ready, as soon as they're fully harvestable. But I really want to get everything on the same schedule, and the only way to do that is to just wait until both fields are ready to go. That's just kind of the way it works. So let's get this done like that. Ideally, we should have enough money to get ourselves to the end of the year when we're ready to do our harvesting. And uh, so, yeah, let's get this turned off. We'll set ourselves up right here so that we can monitor this. Advanced time to the next month should be three months, and the grass will be ready to go in both fields. We can do a full cut. I don't know that we're going to go ahead and do that on this episode, though, because... Uh, I don't know. We might. We might. We might do the full cut. Because this will be the last... Uh, no, this... Uh, May, June... Why can't I go? There we go. <clears throat> uh, I, I think there's going to be two more cuts for this year. So I think I'm, we might save that for the next episode. Because we're already 22 minutes into this one. And I don't like to go any more than 30 minutes on any of my episodes for any of my series. So <laughs> you guys let me know in the comments. Well, I don't know. I don't even know that if even if the audience prefers longer episodes that I'm willing to do that. I have I just I have several episodes that I need to do and I honestly honestly I need to get a fourth video a fourth series going on, an, on another game. Realistically, it needs to be DCS. I need I really need really need to get off my lazy butt and start getting back in that again. <laughs> but I've been procrastinating with it because it just it's such a lot of work to learn how to do all of that. But anyways, uh, this is our setup. Like I said, the setup will change at some point. Uh, when we're able to afford the the typical the typical um, where is it the bail loader this this bail loader here so I'm actually curious what's the difference this one holds 24 bales that one holds four oh but they hold bigger bales okay so this will be the ba this will be the bail loader that we get. Uh, uh, when we can afford it and the reason is is because like I said uh, this bail loader here, uh, when you have the auto bailing mod turned on, it works great while the mod's working, but then every once in a while it'll randomly turn the auto bailing off and it won't secure the trailer and all the bales just fall off the side and you have to go back and pick them back up again. It's kind of annoying. So I'd much rather just have this guy here. It loads it perfectly and it allows you to push them off the back to unload it instead of having to load it off to the left or the right, which can be convenient when you're trying to load and unload in tight spaces. So that's what we're going to be working towards as far as changing our setup here. But for now, this is what we're going to be using until we make enough money to start getting cows and stuff. So anyways, hopefully, guys, hopefully, hopefully you guys have been having lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you have so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of options available there and decide if any of those are right for you. Uh, your support is greatly, your direct support is greatly appreciated and a critical component to help me to turn this into a full-time gig. If you're not interested in a long-term commitment, you can still do a tip by uh, using that thanks button to do a one-time contribution. And as I said, it is greatly appreciated. 
the dream is to make this full time. So your help is uh, very critical to that. Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys have been having lots of fun building this farm with me. Be sure to come back for the long haul and I will see you guys for the next one.